Thank you very much. Uh, Prime Minister, Mr. Orban, uh, I don't know uh, if you remember the first time that we met uh, each other. I'm waiting for the translation now. Uh, in, uh, in that hotel in Budapest, that was in December 1989. Don't remember me the name, but um, I remember me our meeting because, uh, first of all, I, I had a meeting with SDSZ, the, the old Liberal Party, and then I asked you, as uh, the leader of Fidesz, why you are not with your uh, mother party here in the, in the meeting room. And you explained uh, why you did it. And it was just a few months, I remember that, before the successful uh, participation of Fidesz in the first uh, free elections of Hungary. By the way, uh, at that moment you were helped uh, by George Soros. I remember that. And that was a program at that time that was... Uh, yeah, more or less, a little bit more progressive, I should say, than the uh, program of the SSDZ at that moment. I should say more social liberal, a little, a little bit like Emmanuel Macron at that time. So, I, I should say you were the Emmanuel Macron uh, of Hungary in 1989. I don't think that Emmanuel Macron will be pleased with what I have said. Uh, today, so I didn't say it in French, so I hope that it uh, doesn't make a lot. But let's be honest, a lot changed since 1990 and since 1989 when we saw each other. You changed. You dumped your democratic principles, and in a certain way you don't, yeah, you, you say it openly, I want to create not a, a liberal democracy, but I want to go to an illiberal state. And the list is long for the moment, what you have done, harassing NGOs, chasing away critical media, building walls, your attempt also, your opinion to reinstate the death penalty in your country, even when it is not possible based on our treaties, and now you have decided to close down a university. And my request to you is, how far will you go? What is the next thing? Burning books or so? On the place before the parliament in Hungary? The so-called Lajos Kossuth Square, is that the next thing? The books may be of Kertes, the books may be of Konrad, of maybe the books of uh, what is one of my most favorite writers in Hungary, Sander Marai, because Sander Marai also was a Hungarian cosmopolitan that you attacked for the moment. And so, when I'm looking to you, you seem yeah, proud of it. Fantastic that I can tell it all here. And what I see more and more is not a proud conservative, because in the meanwhile you have become a proud conservative. No, I see a sort of modern-day version of old communist Hungary. Economic protectionism, excessive nationalism, the search of an illiberal state. And you see enemies everywhere of the Hungarian state. You see enemies in the energy sector, you see enemies in the media, you see enemies in the NGOs, you see enemies now also in the academic world. It's like Stalin or Brezhnev or back. But now in Hungary, they had also that time of paranoia. It's not enough to have a majority in a democracy. You have to chase them. You have to go after them when they have another opinion. So, Mr. Orban, and I will conclude with that. Hungary became a member of the European Union in 2004. You have signed, and your predecessors to the values of the Union. And all these principles, you know them very well, and even the left or the right in this house respect them. You have violated, in fact, every one, every single of these principles now, in the different cases that have been mentioned by Mr. Timmermans. And yet, what you want to do is to remain member of the European Union. Well, I have, in fact, more respect for the decency of your skeptics who are at least saying, well, I don't like the European Union, I don't like the values, and I go out. You, you want to continue the money of the European funds, the money of the European Union, but not the European values. That's not for you. How you call that? Not very courageous, I should say. And certainly not in line with the politician based on principles. And so my question to you is, don't you think that it is a time to make a choice again, as you made that choice when you became from a liberal democrat, a little bit a nationalist and a conservative? Is it not the time to ask yourself in your soul how you will to be remembered in the future? Do you want to be remembered as somebody 
that liberated your country, Hungary, from communism. And that you did, or want you to be commemorated as an eternal enemy of our open European democratic society. That's the choice that you have to make now.